right? Okay, awesome. So last week we started uh, learning a, we spoke about uh, Elul, right? We spoke about the general concept of how this this process that we're in, this um, the next few months, month and a half, right? Elul and then everything within Tishrei, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, all the different uh, holidays, right? Um, we spoke about how they're not unique and they're not, um, not unique, they're not distinct, they're not separate things, but rather they're all parts of a process, right? This whole process of Elul and Tishrei, it's just a buildup, right? Each step, each one of these uh, holidays is a different step in that process, right? We spoke a little bit about Elul and what Elul means and how Elul is about the king being in the field and us having a unique opportunity to uh, connect to God in a way um you know, in a way that's that's special for Elo, right? And by and by that, by doing so, we can then um, connect to God even in a much deeper way on Rosh Hashanah and then Yom Kippur and then and then Sukkot. So uh, that's what we were talking about uh, last week. Now this week, I wanted to start a mimer on Rosh Hashanah. Okay, uh, it's probably going to take us uh, two to three classes to finish. Hopefully, we'll be able to finish it before Rosh Hashanah. Um, before it's Rosh Hashanah. Um, and I wanted to get started. So the name of the mimer is uh, Ze Ayim Tchilas Maasecha Zikaron Liyim Rishi. Okay, it's a pasuk. Like most of the, uh, you know, most memarim, they all start with a quote, either from the Torah or from the Gemara or from, from you know, different part of of um, just uh, you know of, of the of, of Torah. Okay, and this basically says like this: the pasuk says Ze Ayim Tchilas Maasecha Zikaron Liyim Rishi. Zayim, which means this is the day. This is the day. The, the word ze, this, is actually going to be very key. We're going to discuss a little bit about it uh, as we go along. So this is the day of the beginning of your creation. Zikaran liyim rishon, which is the, you know a remembrance for the first day. Okay, and this zayim, this day, is referring to uh, Rosh Hashanah. Okay, um, and Rosh Hashanah, as we know, is the first day of Tishrei, right? But we, we're going to start with a question, which is a big question. It's so big that it was actually brought by, um, already this question has been, has been asked by, the, the Alta Rebbe asked the question, and the Mitra Rebbe, and the Tzemach Tzedek, the Rebbe Rashab, Marash, Rashab, and the Friedrich Rebbe. Everybody asked this question, and they expound on different approaches to the answer. Okay, but it's, it's a very strong question, and I'm sure they were not the first people to bring that question either. I mean, it's a very strong question. The question is, the first day of creation was actually not Rosh, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah was not the beginning of the world. It was not when God created the world. It wasn't the first day of the seven days of creation, right? Rather, the first day of the seven days of creation was on the, the date was Chaf He Elo, okay? The 25th day of Elo, right? What is Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah is day number six, which is when Adam, the first human, was created, right? So if that's the case, we have a couple of questions, okay? Number one, why do you call this the beginning of your creation? So I mean, it wasn't the beginning of your creation. You know, you started your creation already six days prior, right? Number no, that, That's question number, number one, right? Number two is, you know, why is it that we're celebrating specifically the sixth day, Right? You know, whether it's, you know, the first, the 25th of Elul, the first of Tishrei, why are we not celebrating Rosh Hashanah on the first day of creation, of the day, you know, where God actually started creating the world, right? We're waiting until, you know, the sixth day. We're celebrating the sixth day, right? And, you know, instead of celebrating the first one. So that's that's the second question that we have, okay? Um, and, and further on, we say, as part of the prayer um, of Rosh Hashanah, Right, that all creations, all the different beings in the world, and you know, and in all worlds, kind of go pass in front of God on the day of Rosh Hashanah in a way of judgment. Right, Hashem is looking at them and you know, seeing them, you know, and it, 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 it so seemingly, right, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Right, it's, this is a day that's in a way, quote unquote, celebrated not just by by humans. It's a day that affects everybody, it affects, you know, cows, it affects, I don't know, any, any sort of any sort of animal, plants, everything is affected by this day. Hashem is judging the entirety of the world, right? So seemingly, right, if you're going to pick a day, it's kind of 
you know, you would, you're better off picking the first day of creation when you're creating everything rather than the day that's unique because of a creation of, of mankind. Okay. So right away, we're going to give the answer, right? This is a very, very, you see this in a lot of Amara of the Rebbe where, where the Rebbe will give you the answer right away, right? So you're removing the suspense, but then, you know, the real depth is going to come in analyzing that answer and expounding upon it and understanding a little bit more in depth. So what's the answer? The answer is like this. You know, the, the hint to the answer is actually given in the, the Pasuk that we, that we, that we you know, with, with which we started this mimer. The word ze, okay? So the word ze means this. Um, so in, 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 in Hebrew, like when you say this, it means like, you know, you know, similar to English, this is something that's in front of you. It's something that's visible. It's something that's perceivable, right? As opposed to, um, you know, as opposed to, uh, that or something, you know, the word this alludes to something that's like very vividly perceivable and experienced. You could point with your finger and say, this, look, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. So the idea is that on the sixth day is, in, is when human beings were created and human beings, their avoida, their work, right, is to bring God to the world in a way of this in a way that it could be perceived, that it could be felt, that it could be that it could be in front of you, right? God is always in the world, right? God is God is everything. But on Rosh Hashanah, so, sorry, on, but, but when a person comes in, come, comes into play, we're actually able to through our work on Torah and mitzvahs and self improvement, right? We are able to bring God into the world in a way of this, in a way where you can see and point to your fingers out. Oh, this this is God. Look, I see God. I see God in in this action, I see God in this good deed, in this mitzvah, in this, you know, whatever it is, you see God as, as a part of the world, as something you can experience, right? And that, right, is the whole purpose of the world. The whole purpose of the world, Hashem didn't create the world so that there could be a cow and eat grass. That's not why Hashem created the world. It's really nice how that works, right? But that's not the purpose, right? The cow is there to serve a purpose so that a human can come and elevate the world and bring, you know, reveal God in the world and make it in a way of ze, right? The world itself is is a, the, the Hebrew word um, for like kind of like the opposite, the, the 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 other side, you know, that's not ze, right? Ze again means revealed, you know. Uh, it's koi. Koi means uh, similar to or like like this, right? Uh, like we hear with the prophets. Most prophets say koi amarashem. So most prophets say something like this is what Hashem said. This, this what I'm saying represents what Hashem says, but it's not this. Only Moshe, right? Only Moses, or the greatest of all prophets, says, Ze Amar Hashem. This is what Hashem said. This, exactly this. Right? So this is that distinction between this, the way that it is, it's in front of you, it's clear, and something that's kind of a little bit more hazy, it's hidden, it's not, it's not in front of you, it's not something you can point at. Okay? So the, the world, as it was created on its own, was koi. Koi is spelled chaf he, right? Which is like they the world was created was chaf he of Elul, like this. You know, you, you kind of there is God, but it's not it's not clear, right? And the, the job of a human is to is to fulfill the purpose of the world, right? And that is to bring the ze, right? To make it clear, to bring it out so you can see, oh, there it is, right? Um and that's why that's why we we you know we we celebrate Rosh Hashanah on the day the human was created, right? Because ultimately the purpose of creation only came to be on the day that the, the, the human being was created and not before. Okay. Now, in order to really truly understand this, right? What does it mean, you know, that the purpose of the person? What exactly is the person adding? You know, how, how does the person accomplish this? You know, and 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 you know, how does that play with, with the way that the world is on its own, right? Uh, so in order to understand this, we need to first try to understand a little bit the world without a human, you know? What was the advantage of the world that say on the first day that it was created, right? Here we're debating, you know, whether Rosh Hashanah should have been the first day was, the world was created or on the sixth day when Adam was created. So let's try to understand what are the advantages of the world as it, as it stands on, on its own on the first day. Okay. Um, and we're going to sound like this. 
on the first day of creation, there's a few things that make it stand out. Number one is very interesting. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, it is in Rashi, uh, but it says that even though the world was created in seven days, all beings, including humans, right, were actually created on the first day. Created, right, but not not um, actualized. So, you know, what does that mean? So there's there's a few different steps, right, of creation, right? There's different dim dimensions of the worlds, and each dimension kind of adds something to that process of creation, of tangibility, of, of making something physical, right? So if you're familiar, there, there's four spiritual worlds. Each one of these is a different kind of realm, dimension. Uh, the first one is Atsilis, which means emanation, right? Something that's emanated. It's something that's still pretty much united to its source. It's not an independent being. Then there's the concept of creation, uh, Bria, right? To, to actually create something. Now, I think the concept of creation is something much more conceptual. This is how I interpret it. I, I might be, you know, I might, there's might, there might be other ways of interpreting this. But I understand the concept of creation as a as an idea, as a concept. Something is able to exist. That doesn't mean, right, that Hashem creates the concept of, you know, a table. That doesn't mean that there's a physical table right here that can be grabbed and moved and picked up. It just means that there's a concept of something that could be a table. There's an idea that, you know, the, the world allows for such a thing, okay, which needs to be created. But then you have the process of formation, which takes a little bit more of a tangible, you know, I guess shape, a tangible um, feel. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what where to draw the line, but it starts already already taking shape. And then there's asiya. Asiya means already like a a uh, making. Okay, I'm not sure how to translate exactly, you know, the nuance of, of each word, but the idea is that there's this, you know, the, the actual making into something physical. Right. And at, only at that stage is where you have a physical entity that you can then grab and move and, you know, and, and see with your with physical eyes. OK, so on the first day, everything was created. OK, but it wasn't formed and it wasn't made. It was just created. OK. And, you know, on, on, on subsequent days, right, on the second day, you know, got got created, you know, the 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 the. Um, the, the 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 waters right and then on the third day each day god created took some of those things that he had uh sorry that he had created on the first day and shaped them and made them into actual physical things okay so that's at, at what actually what actually happened it wasn't that god you know the creation of every of of each you know of the birds and of the animals happened on, on on the days where they were made but rather they were all everything was created on the first day and then made to be something physical on the respective on the respective day. So you see, now the first day of creation is actually a super powerful day. I mean, it's the day that every single thing that ever was and ever will be was, was you know, came into being at least in, the, in a conceptual way. And that's super, super powerful. Okay. Uh, and this doesn't just apply, um, you know, to, to the physical world. Actually, everything, right? Every single realm was, was conceived of on that day. Okay. Um, there's another thing about the first day that makes it very unique, and that is that. So, you know, Rabbi, yeah, Rabbi, I'm, I'm sorry. So, I was reading the, the Vadak talks about this. Um, he talks about what? that on the first day he created the, the Vadak, okay, yeah, and, and he talks about that he created everything, and then it seems like he just put it into place on each day, right? So, it was already created. so it was just like sort of like a puzzle or something, maybe that so, an analogy of it. So, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. Right. So that's that's what I was saying. I think the way that I understand the, the, the difference between a creation and a making, right? I mean, is that when you create something, this again, this is how I understand it. I mean, you might have somebody else that'll tell you different. The way that I understand it is that when you create something, when God created something, he created the concept of it the idea of it. They, the, the, it. There's no physical entity yet, right? He created everything, but that, you know, but that is the allowing for the concept to exist. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, the example that I could think of, 
you know, this is my own example, which means that it could be faulty, but this is an example that I could think of, right? There are a certain number of colors in the world. You can't create a new color. You can't even conceive of a new color, right? This is when, when God created, you know, he decided there was going to be a certain number of colors. He had to create the concept of each one of these colors, what it was going to be, right? Anything outside of that cannot be conceived. And I might be completely wrong in this. This is just kind of like an example that I just thought of. But, you know, there needs to be a conceptual creation of something. And then that finds expression, right, in the physical world once it's made to be. So when what I understand from what, what the Radak says and what Rashi also brings down is that on the first day, everything was conceived of. Every, every concept. God, God created all the concepts that are going to dominate the world. Everything, all the forces of nature all the physical things, all the possible entities that are going to exist. But they were not necessarily actualized. They were conceived of. They were, they were created in, in, in a way that are not necessarily, isn't necessarily like, you know, physical. physical. But then as it comes down, they were, they were formed and they're, they're made into actual physical being, right? And, and that happened at each day. So I, it's, I don't think that God kind of created, you know, animals, and let, kind of left them somewhere in, in space, and then kind of just you know put them put them put them in the world. But rather, he created animals, perhaps in an intellectual, idea way, in a, in a spiritual way, and then actualized it by 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 making them into physical beings on the you know the sixth day. You see, this is kind of how I understand that. Um, but anyway, uh, I want to continue. So we're we're, we're pointing out the diff the, the the advantages, the the great things about the first day of creation and the way that the world was before uh, Adam showed up. Okay, there's another thing that was very interesting, right, about the first day, and that it says that Zay, uh, um, after you know the first day of creation, Hashem says Vayer Vayboiker Yem Echad. Right, it was day and it was night. Day one, right. Usually every day it says the second day, the third day. On the first day, it doesn't say the first day. It says day one. And the Midrash explains that why does it say day one? It, because it was a day of oneness. It was a day, right, when you, you know, like it was revealed in the physical world as, as much as it is in the spiritual world that God is one, that there's nothing beside for God. Okay? So, again, you see the special, you know, how special this day is, right? Where it was, it was so powerful, it was the day where, all creations were conceived of in a way where we were created in a spiritual way. It was a day in which, you know, within the, the, whatever the physical realm is, right. There was oneness. Okay. And furthermore, we're going to explain, right. That it was a day in which Hashem said on the first day, he says, let there be light. Okay. And it's explained that what is this light, right? This light is what gives, it's not just talking about physical light. It's, it's the light that allows for people, right, to then go ahead and, 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 and reveal godliness, right? To reveal God the way that he was in that first day, if you will, right? And even higher, to reveal God himself, right? It was a day in which this, this light was created to the extent that it says, um, and our sages basically say that um, that, that light was so powerful that it had to be concealed. And it's something that we kind of bring out through our work, through our avoida. But it was concealed because it's such a powerful, such a powerful light. Okay. So, so now we understand. I mean, you see, like, look at the world, look at how powerful, how beautiful the world, you know, the advantages, the, 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 the special things that this first day had. Okay. Before Adam showed up. Um not only that, right? But there's the idea that, you know, throughout all six days of creation, before, you know, including the sixth day, right? Before Adam sinned, the world was in a state of Gan Eden. Was it a, was like was the Garden of Eden? That that was what the entire world was like. Right after the sin, Gan Eden is no longer in the entire world, right? There's Gan Eden is kind of like a spiritual thing. It's it's removed, whatever, you know, the, the, you know, I think it says somewhere that it's, that it's all, there's also a physical representation of Gan Eden somewhere on, on earth, but the idea is that the world itself is not in a state of Gan Eden, a state of perfection, if you will, right? And even in such a state, right? Even in such a state, Adam was put, was placed in Gan Eden to, um, to work 
on the Gan Eden to, to improve it, to make it better. Okay? Um, so now we understand a little bit, right? We understand how like the world as it was before Adam was created was already in a very, very lofty state, was in a state of Gan Eden, a state of perfection. There was a, the, the first day where there was such light that was revealed, right? And now we understand, you know, now we need to understand like, what is Adam bringing to the world? So if the world, if the world is already in a state of complete completeness, right? Why do we need Adam to come in and do what? Why does Hashem need to create a human being to, 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 to do what? So what, what we explain here um, is, that, is exactly what we, said, what we said at the beginning. That the, when the world is in a state of completeness, even a perfect world is a limited world, right? Is limited by 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 rules and by laws and by by limitations, right? And what Adam comes to do is to allow that limited world. What what Adam comes to do is to allow that limited world to to shine with a light that's unlimited, right? In other words, this limited world conceals God. God is in a state of koi, right? And like, like this, you know, it's, you kind of, you know, you see nature and, you know, it alludes to God. It makes you, sometimes you feel a little bit of God. It makes you think there is a God, you know, but you don't see God. What Adam came to do, right? And Adam is, you know, represents the Jewish people who's coming to do Torah and mitzvahs. What we come to do is to allow that world to transcend to bring the light of Zeh, Zeh Yom Tchilas the light of God as He is, right, into this physical world. Even if the world would be perfect, you still need, right, Adam to reveal this, right, because a perfect world is a limited world. Only, a, a, you know, only when, with, when Adam is added to the mix, he's able to make that world transcend and bring God into that world, right? Bring Zeh, right? And that happened on Rosh Hashanah, Zeh Yom Tchilas this is the day. This is the day that Zeh, you know, began to be able to be to come into the world. This revelation of God as He is. Um, yeah, and that's why we celebrate it specifically on, on, on the sixth day because that's the day that Adam Rishon was created. So I think we'll stop here. We have a few more sections to do. We we can do that, uh, God willing, uh, next week. But we can stop over here for now. Do you guys have any questions? Okay. Awesome. So thank you guys for coming. Um, and I guess I'll see you next week. Uh, thank you, Rabbi. Really nice uh, teaching today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. What was that? What is uh, your source? Uh, so uh, uh, we could uh, read up on this a little bit. Sure. This is from uh, Safer on my Marim. I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. It's like that. Okay. Anyway, Sa Sefer. Oh, you cleared that up for me. That made a, that made more sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> Happy. Uh, so the the Rebbe, our Rebbe, has a you know a lot of my Marim that are out there. Um, you know, and he has he has a, there's a set called uh, Sefer Amar Marim Malukat. Um, I have the old version, but th this is base um, bet. Uh, you can find it. You can find it in the newer version. You can find it on the Tishrei. And there's a lot of my Marim on a lot of different different subjects. There's a lot of them on Rosh Hashanah, and this is just you know one of them there. Uh, you might be able to find it in English. I'm not sure if there's a translation for this specific one, but I'm sure there should be something similar uh, or, or definitely something on Rosh Hashanah available in the Hasidic Heritage series. You can find those on Chabad.org probably or buy it on Kehos if you if you okay. okay. Well thank you. My pleasure. Uh anyway I'll see you guys next week in Mirzashem. Thank you.